Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this afternoon with St. John Lutheran Church. Today is the feast of the ascension of our Lord. After 40 days of being with his disciples, Jesus takes those disciples to the mountain ascends into the clouds to the Father. And that's the scene that's depicted here in our artwork. All that is human is taken to the Father, just as all that is the Father is found in the Son, Jesus Christ. The pamphlet should guide you through your participation in the worship, and we begin with thanksgiving for baptism. I invite you to stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We thank you, O God. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We bless you, O God. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. We praise you, O God. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy, for the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
reading from Acts. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. <clears throat> While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes had stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read this psalm responsibly. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. The Lord has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham, the rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. A reading from Ephesians. Paul writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. The holy gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven, and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to, to, to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Ascension Day always falls in the middle of the week, so unless you come to the Thursday service, you, you never get the, the full Ascension Day story. Um, and it's, it's always fortuitous that we have a graphic, a, a uh, almost life-size graphic of the story here in our, in our sculpture. I've been reflecting on this story with, with reference to the cross, and I have in mind Luther's teaching about the distinction between the theology of the cross and the theology of glory. Because the ascension seems like one of those glorious incidences in Jesus' life, right? It has its parallel, the transfiguration. Jesus takes James and Peter and John up to the mountaintop and he glows in the daylight. His clothes become dazzling white, we're told. Here again, some glorious event seems to happen. How are we to understand this? When Luther teaches things like this, this is from the Heidelberg Dis Disputation, so he just wrote out sentences that he was willing to debate with other theologians about. Um, the ninth uh, thesis that he presents is this. That person does not deserve to be called a theologian who looks upon the invisible things of God as though they were clearly perceptible in those things which have actually happened. That's how he talks about the theo theologian of glory. And we know from the scriptures this happened, but then in the 20th thesis he writes this, he deserves to be called a theologian, however, who comprehends the visible and manifest things of God seen through suffering and the cross. The cross. Somehow Luther would encourage us to view even the transfiguration, even the ascension through the lens of the cross. And I think Luther understood that it's in the cross that Jesus' life intersects with our lives. As long as we live in this world and we are separated from the full glory of God and the full grace of God and the full kingdom of God, we are here in the world beneath the cross, the cross that Jesus experiences with us, the death that Jesus experiences for us, provides us a lens understand what is in store for us, what this ascension story means. In 1 Peter, in the first epistle of Peter, Peter writes this, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. As he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. The quotation that Peter writes is from Leviticus in a couple of spots. You shall be holy, for I am holy, says God. And we hear the gospel here, that we set our hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring. But there's also a bit of a concern, because the teaching of the Old Testament and the teaching of Jesus, the teaching that Peter points to here is that anything that is not holy will not on the last day be brought into the presence of God. And we live in a broken, fallen world. We live in a place that we are pained with suffering and sorrow and loss. How do we understand these things? 
We understand them through the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ in which Jesus is wounded and sorrowful and experiences loss and death. And remember even our Easter Day stories, stories that should be definitely about glory, Jesus' resurrection from dead, Jesus' victory over death, Jesus' demonstration to the world of his power for our behalf. Even in the resurrection stories, Jesus appears with the wounds in his hands and his feet and his side. We have that kind of graphic story of Doubting Thomas. Oh, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my finger in the hole in his hand, says Doubting Thomas. Then Jesus appears a week later and says, go ahead, put your hand in my side. Jesus, after his resurrection, maintains the wounds that he has suffered on the cross. We, who are human beings that live in the world as well, are wounded. We have our sorrows, we have our losses. But as we connect our lives to Christ, as we connect our lives through the cross to what Jesus promises, those wounds and sorrows that make us who we are, that cause us to respond in the ways in which God's Spirit guides us, those things are made holy. They are redeemed. Jesus' wounds no longer hurt him. Our wounds no longer hurt us. Our sorrows and our losses are covered over by the grace of God as Jesus' sorrows and losses. And in this ascension story, you can barely see it in our statue because the artist knew his scriptures, Jesus takes even our wounds and his wounds to the right hand of God the Father. You can barely see on Jesus' foot a little mark, a mark of the nail. The promise of the ascension, when viewed through the, the lens of the cross, is that those wounds and sorrows and losses that make us who we are, are connected to Christ, so that we are strengthened in those occasions, and they go with us to the presence of God, where they are redeemed and made holy, where they are no longer a pain, but a definition of who we are as we experience, finally, the full glory of God, the grace of God, all that is revealed in Jesus Christ. The story of the ascension is a story of God's love for us in all that we have and all that we are. The mystery of suffering in the world remains, but God loves us even in the midst of our loss and sorrow. He receives us the same way that he receives Jesus Christ into glory and the full promise of the kingdom. Thanks be to God for the cross which saves us and the ascension which demonstrates God's great love for us.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you always. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to bear joyful witness to your love made known in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have fashioned a habitat for all your creatures, and you fill the earth with your glory. Give rain where it is needed and rescue those inundated by floods. Mend what is torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources, and all people flourish and live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You heal those who are sick and bind up the brokenhearted. Attend to the cares and needs of the hurting and hopeless in our congregation, community, workplaces, schools, and families. We pray especially for Lori, John, Janet, Myrna, Kim, Sandy, Roger, Megan, Vi, Judith, Dale, Bob, Drew, Carleen, Jody, Catherine, Ruth, Kim, Ada, Terry, Judy, Jean, Carl, Lorraine, Virginia, Bill, Roseanne, Carol, Jennifer, all those affected by COVID-19, and those we name now silently or loud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have gathered us in this congregation, enlightened our hearts, and given us a share of the immeasurable greatness of your power. Help us love one another, be reconciled where we are divided, and share the riches of your grace with our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In raising Christ from the dead, you put your great power to work in the world. With Christ, raise us and all who have died in the faith. We remember those in our lives and in our community who have gone before us. Thank you for their gifts among us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen in thee. Alleluia. I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one as once was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are pleased to accept the offering of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to make him King of Kings. Following his example, we bring these offerings as pledges to serve you under his gracious rule and as a symbol of our hope to be the people of your kingdom without end. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to his disciples and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine nature. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the rem remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to receive from this table. Eat and be satisfied. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we recite the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant. Let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The yellow page is there in your, in your papers today. Uh, please take note of that. But the one thing that I do want to say uh, aloud is next week, beginning next week, our worship service for the midweek moves to Wednesday at 11 a.m. So if you come on Thursday afternoon, I won't be prepared. So Wednesday at 11 o'clock, put that in your calendar for next week, and we'll try that through the summer. I hope that that works as well as the uh, 1.30 on Thursday. So Wednesday, 11 o'clock, starting next week. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.